Every day, Jamie comes home hungry. At first, his parents don't understand why, since they usually provide enough food for Jamie. Jamie is reluctant to explain why he is starving. Jamie seemed to be afraid of something or someone. The parents of Jamie decide to see the principal. Who else was clueless about what was happening? They learned something from his peers that no parent wanted to hear, and they had to act on it right now. Jamie said he never received meals from home, and the students informed the parents and the school of this. They simply assumed his family couldn't afford it. It was all quite perplexing to Jamie's parents. There must have been an incident in the stairwell or on the way to class. The headmaster assured the students that he would provide assistance in resolving the issue. Jamie was also beckoned inside. As soon as somebody mentioned lunch, his tears began to flow. But then something strange occurred, and Jamie is still reluctant to discuss it. He was adamant about keeping everything to himself. His parents took it quite hard. One of his teachers was then invited in to provide some fascinating information. There was a new substitute teacher at school, and from the beginning, she made Jamie feel quite uneasy. Perhaps this is the person who tampered with Jamie's meal. But why does he act this way? Eventually, they had to call in the replacement instructor. Upon seeing Jamie and his parents approach the principal's office, he abruptly altered his mood. He was finally met with the tale. He said he was completely clueless about the topic at hand. However, this didn't hold water at all. The principal and the replacement teacher had a private conversation. He said he had nothing to do with it. Meanwhile, another educator arrived to reassure the family. This educator was aware, like everyone else, that something was up with the replacement. Both of Jamie's parents had to do something. They were summoned back to the office of the school's headmaster, but he informed them they were out of luck because he needed proof. Both Jamie and the instructor avoided giving them any information. They needed to improvise if they were going to have any chance of capturing him. Jamie returned home many times over the following several days, but avoided communicating with his parents. They came away from their school visit feeling like nothing had changed. They were still in the dark about their next steps. However, they were adamant on making the replacement instructor foot the bill. The next day, Jamie's father, Thomas, realized that he had had enough and went to talk to Callum, the replacement instructor, on his own. He got into the car and headed off to class. Following the lesson, he returned to the classroom. After being caught off guard by Thomas's entrance, Callum froze. Callum kept his cool as Thomas tried to pick a fight with him. He assured Thomas that things weren't as they seemed. Despite its brevity, Thomas found the dialogue peculiar and it only served to increase his confusion. Thomas's talk with Callum triggered a few red flags in his mind. It wasn't that the instructor had said anything especially alarming, but more that he gave off an odd aura. Thomas didn't know what to make of it, but he was confident that he needed more information and he was set on getting it. On the way back, Callum reassured Thomas not to worry, since Jamie would be okay. Thomas, however, knew deep down that this was not the case. As he drove home, he worried constantly. The chat had not helped him feel better. On the contrary, he felt even worse after it. He tried searching for Callum using his entire name, but came up empty. He didn't seem to have any internet profiles, and he could only find one web page that referenced him. A web page for an elementary school. What possible relevance might that web page have to the new educator? Even while his name was still on the roster of professors, it was clear that he was no longer actively involved with the institution. Thomas inquired about Callum's departure from his position at the institution. He was curious as to what was going on and whether or if there was a specific reason Callum had changed schools. Thomas's anxiety level has just increased. This educator has to stop doing whatever the heck he's doing to his student. During dinner, Thomas asked Jamie directly whether there was anything going on with his instructor that he should be aware of. He had been waiting to see how he would respond to hearing about Callum, and he was disappointed. When Thomas posed this question to Jamie, he seemed startled. 
he stutteringly assured Thomas that there was absolutely nothing to worry about. Not that he could be persuaded, however. He was now much more confident that something was happening, and he was curious as to what it was. Thomas, however, quickly realized that he was repeating his instructor Callum word for word, as though he had told him to make that statement. Something had to be causing all this, but could it be something harmless? Given Jamie and Callum's actions, Thomas was beginning to doubt it. Thomas now knew for sure that this instructor was responsible for Jamie's behavior, and he intended to discover the truth. How, though? A worried parent whose kid was also enrolled in Jamie's class provided the solution. Both Thomas and the other parent were firm in their resolve. Apparently, she had also seen a shift in her daughter's conduct and was curious to learn whether or not Thomas had encountered the same with Jamie. Yes, he did. They got together to discuss the issues their kids were having and what they might do to help. They conspired to find out what this instructor was doing to or with their kids. They needed not just an explanation, but also concrete evidence of what was going on, so they had to tread carefully. Both of their kids were reluctant to open up, and Callum wasn't helping matters by confessing guilt to either of them. Nicole, the second concerned parent, suggested using a hidden recording device to capture the instructor in the act. But they needed a place to store it. To capture anything, they had to do it in a manner that neither youngster would suspect anything was up. A microphone was secretly placed in Jamie's bag. The following day at school, everyone could hear everything that had transpired. The bag served as the best possible cover for the hidden recording equipment. Jamie's father's ability to take in his surroundings in detail was thanks to his trusty backpack. He overheard his conversations with the bus driver and classmates. He also learned how the other instructors dealt with him and evaluated his performance. He was able to hear from the tape that Jamie was having trouble in other areas as well. And he knew Callum was at fault, but he couldn't put his finger on what was occurring. At least, he couldn't hear anything until Jamie entered the classroom with Callum. Thomas was in for some shocking news that he had not been expecting. He overheard Jamie enter the room and start talking to the other pupils. Upon entering the classroom, however, Callum saw something that was quite different from what he had anticipated. Callum began class like any other day. To all appearances, nothing was happening. However, nobody in the classroom seemed willing to risk speaking out in front of Callum, and the atmosphere was unusually silent. Thomas found it really odd that everyone was acting this way at once. Nothing like this happened in any of the other courses. And then it occurred... Thomas was visibly shaken by Callum's reaction to a question from one of Jamie's pals. He took off his headphones and tossed them. He didn't waste a second of time getting ready to get out to class. He had to speak to Callum directly. Nothing about this made sense. Thomas's excitement was palpable. To what was he exposed? In an instant, Thomas had sprung out of his chair. To go to school, he planned to get in his car. Thomas took precautions to ensure he had a backup of the recording. The principal would be his first port of call, he determined. Getting it done was crucial. The school principal was in a position to do something about it. To Thomas, he was the only person worth putting his faith in. He spent the whole car ride deliberating the best approach for breaking the news to the principal. Concerned that anything could have been missed, he double-checked the records. Hopefully, everything was captured on tape, but he did not play back the audio to check. First and foremost, he wanted to guarantee Jamie's safety. Actually, it was all he could think of. Thomas hurriedly showed up at the institution. The other parents were not informed by him. He was on his own to do this. What he had done was wrong, but he justified it by thinking about his son's future. Jamie means the world to him, and he would risk his life to keep him safe. His next move was to rap on the door of the school principal. Paul, the headmaster, was at a loss for words. What the heck was going on? He was at a loss for action. Thomas needed to share his tale right now, but he couldn't catch his breath. Paul tried to calm Thomas down by offering him a drink. This prompted Thomas to begin his explanation. It was difficult for Paul to find the right words. A personal listening of the tape was something he was interested in. No way was Thomas's school experiencing anything even like what he just described. Even less so did he know Callum. 
In fact, his tenure in town was rather brief. On the other hand, from what he heard in his discussions with Callum, everything went swimmingly. After that, he became an attentive listener. Paul slowed down to make sure he caught every word. Before he listened to the whole audio, he did beg Thomas to be quiet and stay still. Paul didn't think anything was strange at first, but then his mood shifted dramatically. Callum had to face them directly. However, an apology must come first. Paul expressed regret to Thomas that the school could not tolerate Callum's actions. This kind of thing would never be allowed to happen on campus. They did not want for this to be their first impression on other parents. Paul is working on making his school a secure place for all of the students there. The rules specifically forbade this. Thomas was so incensed by Callum's behavior that he joined Paul to confront him about it. Paul maintained his composure and reasoned that because they are all adults, it is okay for them to continue making threats. Thomas preferred a face-to-face -face meeting with Callum, but Paul advised him to let the latter do the talking. Paul knocked on the door at Callum's classroom. Jamie was taken aback to see her father as they walked in. Yet, he appeared relieved to see him. After class, Paul approached Callum and requested a private meeting. Even though Callum didn't understand what was happening, he went along with it. Fortunately, he was unable to avoid doing so. Paul filled Callum in on what he overheard. A stunned Callum. As a result, he was at a loss for words. You could see he was on the verge of tears. Even Thomas was taken aback by this. Can it be that Callum just didn't understand the gravity of the situation? Callum began describing himself to the two guys. Or at least, he made an effort. For obvious reasons, the kids did not want to be in Callum's lessons anymore. He lacked the skills necessary to effectively supervise minors. Callum continued to stammer. He had no experience working with children, and so treated he them as if they were adults. And then the meal came up. The statement regarding Jamie's meal seemed to take Callum by surprise. Not knowing that things had progressed that far, he did nothing. Now that everything was out in the open, Callum had a good reason for it. Then, out of nowhere, Jamie walked in. The police had been summoned by Thomas. Jamie reassured his father and Paul that they should not be concerned. They believed they were helping Jamie, but he had some things to say as well, so they were both puzzled. He avoided the topic since it was too delicate for him to discuss. At first, he said that he and Callum had collaborated on a major project. This is why he was avoiding discussing the matter with his parents. Now, Thomas was much more perplexed than before. His position demanded that he be fully informed. Meanwhile, law enforcement personnel had arrived. They also dropped by with inquiries. All of it was a chaotic jumble. Thomas's decision to involve the authorities was inappropriate. In addition, Callum opted to answer the police officer's queries regarding his background. Now they had an opportunity to have a private conversation with Jamie, which is why he chose to elaborate on the meal in great detail. There was a great and noble purpose behind his daily hunger. He did not want to be a nuisance, however. Jamie's retelling of the incident was accompanied by a lot of tears. When he arrived at school one day, he saw Callum assisting a fellow student. Jamie inquired as to Callum's whereabouts, and Callum revealed the reason for the whole incident. Since his family was so impoverished, the kids seldom received lunch at home. During this time, Jamie informed Callum that this was unnecessary and proceeded to share much of his meal with others. His objective was to have everyone believe that Callum had tossed it away. Callum accepted to be the scapegoat. They were merely trying to avoid making any worried parents worry. The young man wanted to know he was okay without raising eyebrows. Because of this, Callum and Jamie have opted to maintain their anonymity. For some time, they managed to conceal the information. There was one other kid in the class who didn't know about it until later. Then Callum took the role of the antagonist. Thomas was ecstatic to tell his mom about Jamie's great contribution to the school community. Jamie was happy to see his parents when he got home from school. This level of happiness was unprecedented for her. That his kid was acting like himself again brought a sigh of relief to Thomas. Jamie's parents decided to get involved and assist the youngster out. 
They packed two lunches every day that Thomas chose to offer Jamie. There is joy all around. Jamie felt like the savior of the world after ensuring the child's hunger woes were over. Nobody else found out what was happening. 